Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my new video. My name is AJ, I'm here to talk about this clever young gentleman from England who has been caught in Russia fighting the Russians. So um, before I start talking about this, um, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and if you want to join my Patreon that will be really really appreciated and also you can buy me a coffee as well. So without further ado, let's continue. So this clever guy decided to go all the way to um, Russia to fight the Russians. He's had two tours in Syria where he was fighting alongside uh, his Kurdish um, brethren. Um, he is Kurd. He's not British British. He's Kurdish British. He was, he's more Kurd than British to be honest. And he's been caught and this is what his family has been saying. What have the Russians done to him? Family's fury after beaten British fighter is paraded on Moscow state television in handcuffs with a cut to the head, swollen eye after being captured with Ukrainians during battle for Mariupol. And yesterday um, they said this. Family of British fighter Aiden Aslin captured by Russia beg for him to be treated well. Well let me tell you something. Don't expect anyone to treat anybody well when you're a mercenary going all the way to Ukraine uh, to fight against the Russians. I mean you're not going to get any sympathy not from me, not from the Russians and not from the rest of the world. Except maybe some of the Western world might give you a bit of sympathy. Maybe some of the papers. So let's see what this paper says shall we. Aidan Aslin, 27, from Newark, Nottinghamshire, is a member of the 39th Brigade and he's basically gone to defend Ukraine after falling in love with a woman he's due to marry. Well, that's a lot of BS, isn't it? Because this guy has had two tours in Syria and basically he was fighting for the Kurdish um, army. Uh, he's had two wars there. And now he's gone to fight for the Ukrainian army. He obviously doesn't love this woman because if you have a woman that you love, you're not going to go and get yourself killed, are you? That's the most stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. If the Russians do have Aiden captive, we would like to remind them that the Geneva Convention and to treat him and other soldiers in a humane and dignified way, he said. So let me tell you something. He is what you call a mercenary. He's not Ukrainian. He's a foreign a soldier. He's fought in two wars in Syria. He's a trained soldier. He's gone there to kill Russian soldiers. Russia, according to Geneva Convention, can do whatever they want because he's classed as a foreign mercenary. And foreign, mercenary, for, foreign mercenaries do not come under the Geneva Convention, do not come under the POW status. So Russia have everything within their rights to do whatever they want to him. And he is lucky that the Russians haven't killed him yet. He is very, very lucky because he's gone there to kill Russians. So he is a mercenary. He's not part of the Ukrainian army, despite what they say. He's not even Ukrainian. And, you know, the Russians are within their rights to do whatever they want. And if you disagree with me, so let's put the boot on the other foot, shall we? What do you think the Americans would do? If they were fighting in Iraq and he goes to Iraq to fight the Americans, he goes there to kill American soldiers, what do you think the Americans would do to him? First of all, they'll kill him. And if they don't kill him, they'll capture him and they'll put him into Guantanamo Bay for the rest of his life. And they will, he'll get tortured for the rest of his life. He does not come under POW statuses. He is a foreign mercenary and that's how Americans would have treated him. So this gets even funnier. So let's read on. This is a worrying time for our family. Russia has a reputation of how it deals with its prisoners. Then why did you let him go then? Why did you let him go if you were that worried? It's like his dad or his mum patting him on his head and said, Go, go my son. We are proud of you. Go, go, go kill some Russians. We are so proud of you. Well done. There are seven wives waiting for you in heaven if you die. So, we are proud of you. So, do you get me? This is absolutely ridiculous. Now they're worried about him because he's captured. 
What about if he was dead? He's crazy. Why'd they send him in the first place? Absolutely ridiculous. I, I blame Liz Truss for this. She should take full responsibility for any British people that are going over there to fight the Russians. So it gets even funnier. So uh, look at this. The former care worker who was said to have fought like hell reportedly told a friend that Russian forces were looking for him specifically to capture the Westerner who had been updating his followers on social media from the trenches. So what the hell is it doing updating his social media from the trenches? Not only is it giving his position away, it, this is absolutely a joke, absolute joke. It sounds like he's gone all the way there to get twi Twitter likes or something. Seriously, who does that? Who goes to a war situation and starts updating your Twitter followers? Like, your Twitter followers matter. I don't understand why you have to update your Twitter followers if you're going to be dead. There's no point. It doesn't really matter how many follows you get, how many likes you get. You're going to be dead fighting the Russians or get captured. Absolutely ridiculous. This guy, seriously. Look what he says now. Mr. Aslin passed on a message to his followers, oh his followers, the most important thing in his life, saying it's been 48 days, we tried our best to defend Mariupol, but we have no choice but to surrender to the Russian forces, oh boohoo, we have no food, no ammunition, it's been a pleasure everyone, I hope this war ends soon. And finally you can see him um, see him making a video doing selfies and posting it on social media absolutely absolutely ridiculous I mean there's no words for me to describe this guy no words not only is he putting himself and the rest of his um, unit in danger by giving away his position using social media but him updating his social media while he's in war I mean I'm sure there's rules for that because if the Azov militants um, saw him posting videos such as this on social media regularly, I'm sure the Azov militants would have shot him themselves. I want to talk about this as well. How many Ukrainian refugees will come to the UK? Homes for Ukraine scheme explained and how to apply. So it says here more than 100,000 British people across the UK have offered to host Ukrainian refugees in the Homes for Ukraine scheme. I mean, look. This is freedom of democracy. I guess you can do whatever the hell you want. But these people, I mean, there's no words for me to describe them. Because the situation we're having at the moment where everything is expensive, you know, the gas prices, the inflation, um, the cost of living. I don't understand how these people can afford to have Ukrainian refugees living in their homes for pretty much free. Because not only do you have to house them, you're going to have to feed them. Because these U Ukraine refugees, they're not, they don't have any money. The government's not going to give them any money. So you, you are going to be left with looking after them, feeding them, clothing them, um, housing them, and looking after their every needs. And not only that, you could have... You could have an Azov militant in there as well. I don't think they're going to they're going through any checks or the British government probably don't even ch care about whether they're Azov militants or not. So you can literally have an Azov militant coming to to your home and staying in your home and a literal Nazi staying in your home. And these British people have no clue, absolutely no clue. So look at this article. It's actually quite funny. UK must stop matching lone female Ukrainian um, refugees with single men. So when you offer to, you know, share your room or your house with a Ukrainian refugee, you obviously don't get a choice. They match you with whoever is available. So they've been told that if you're a single man, um, they're not going to match you with a female, which is understandable. But imagine this. Imagine you're expecting a beautiful Ukrainian woman to come and live in your home and instead you get this guy at the front. I mean look at the size of this guy at the front. He looks like an Azov militant. And look at the size of him. I mean this guy is not only going to be sleeping in your home, he could be a Nazi, but he'll be eating all of your food as well. I mean the government pays £350 per month to house a Ukrainian refugee in your home. £350 is not going to even pay the electricity bills. 
So imagine this guy eating all of your food, going to the gym every day, coming home, uh, having a shower, uh, cooking his own meals, cooking like 10 meals a day because of, look at the size of him. And he's going to empty your fridge. And, you know, that's it. That's your life savings gone. It's absolutely ridiculous. And, it's, and you can see how... You know, people like him are going under the radar coming into the UK. So you literally could have an Azov militant the size of this guy, muscular, racist, living under your home. You're housing him, you're feeding him. And absolutely ridiculous how brainwashed some of these British people are. Seriously. So there is something else I need to t talk to you about Ukraine. Uh, I actually went to Kiev um, I went to Kiev during Euro 2012 and I want to ex describe my experience to you guys and back then all, I could see all of these articles coming out saying Euro 2012 Ukraine's festering football racism victim of abuse says Sol Campbell is right black fans should stay at home so I went with a group of my friends to Euro 2012 I am a big football fan and so are some of my friends so we went, we went to watch uh, England, obviously, and uh, I had one black friend and one Indian friend and the rest were white. Uh, so there's about 10 of us. So we went there to have a good time. Um, we did manage to get into a few games and that, we didn't have any issues going into games and things like that. The issues came at night when we want to have a, wanted to have a night out. So we wanted to go to one of the local clubs and it was quite a famous club in Ukraine, in Kiev. And we were waiting outside the door to get in. And um, when it was our turn, uh, the bouncer basically looked at my friend who's black and, and looked at my other friend who's Indian and literally said no N-word and no Indianos. That, that was his words. And we were pretty shocked uh, by by that statement. Um, so so we we started uh, confronting the bouncer because you know that's racism. You know you you know what the hell are you doing? Then his his uh, bouncer mate started um, coming out and started pushing us around. And uh, and they they've been pretty pretty racist about it. And then we were, we thought we'd go to another club, and uh, again we were refused entry to the next club as well, um, just because they didn't like the look of my um, black friend and Indian friend. And uh, it, it was a, it was it was a really really bad experience, really, to be honest. And you know, and you can see how my friends were being treated in Ukraine. Everywhere we went, whether it's for dinner, whether we were just going out for for a walk just the way they would be looked out the way they, they would be treated and it was mainly the the men uh it was mainly the guys that were, that were kind of treating them that way the women were fine the women were, were, were very very friendly but you know most of people in ukraine are very friendly i'm not saying everyone is like that but majority i think old old school Maybe they could have been Azov militants, I don't know, uh, but they were being really, really racist uh, towards my friends. So obviously, um, we didn't really enjoy our trip in Ukraine. Um, the women were absolutely beautiful there. Um, so many beautiful women in Ukraine. Can't really complain about the women. Um, on the night out, there were so many beautiful women. They all looked amazing. Um, they were wearing high heels and, and looking super, super hot. Uh, so there's no issues with the women, just the, the way these uh, Ukrainian men uh, were treating us and our friends was really left a sour taste in our mouths, really. So you see stories like this every single week. Every time there's a football match being played in Ukraine, black players get racial treatments, they get booed out the field, they get all sorts of abuse, um, all sorts of um, monkey slants um, directed at them so it's really really bad racism problem in Ukraine so when people start talking about Ukrainian people being civilized and things like that you know that's not the case there's a huge racism problem in, in Ukraine there's a huge neo-nazi problem in Ukraine and before this war in Russia you know there were 
everyone was talking about it. If you're a football ba- fan, you know that if you go into Ukraine, you're going to get racially abused if you're a person of colour. So a lot of my black friends and a lot of my Asian friends just don't bother going to football matches in Ukraine because they know they're going to get racially abused or fights or, or get beaten up. And when I was in Ukraine, there were so many fights going on between football fans and neo-Nazis. You know, I was really, literally scared for my life uh, being in Ukraine because it, it was really scary. It wasn't a f- friendly country at all. I didn't feel safe walking down the streets. And, you know, there, there's a huge problem out there. Now, you know, Britons are inviting 100,000 Ukrainian refugees and yeah most of them are women and children but a lot of them are men a lot of them are men they could be Azov militants you know it's not just women and children coming there's men coming as well they could be neo-nazis dressed as civilians you know you just don't know you could have a neo-nazi in your home so that's all I have time for I know my video is a bit controversial um, I'm not really giving much sympathy to any mercenaries that decide to go all the way to Ukraine to fight the Russians. Uh, no symph- sympathy from me whatsoever. If you go, you know, don't expect you to get any sort of good treatment or expect the Russians to welcome you with, with a bed of roses. You know, you can't expect anything like that. I have no sympathy whatsoever. And if you do get caught, well, good luck to you because you are not going to be under any Geneva Convention, any POW status. You are going to be a foreign mercenary and you know what the Americans do to foreign mercenaries. You know what the Americans have done to foreign mercenaries in Iraq, in Syria, in Afghanistan. So you'll be lucky to be alive. And even if you are alive, you'll be lucky if they ever let you out from Guantanamo Bay. So that's all I have time for. So let me know what you guys think and I'll see you in the next video.